This nasty, gross, bug-infested thing is the first Intel Mac Mini that Apple sold. It has an Intel Core Solo processor. Yeah, just a single core. But this thing has been stuck in my garage for the last four years. So I decided maybe it was time to get it out, clean it up, and see if the thing even works. Hey, I'm Jerry, and I'm not buffering. But this is an original Intel Mac Mini with a Core Solo processor that I bought back in 2007 for my grandma. This guy came with a 1.5 gigahertz Core Solo processor, 512 megabytes of RAM, a 60 gigabyte hard drive, and look at all those ports. You get four USB ports, DVI for your display. You get a FireWire port, Ethernet, and some audio ports. This guy had a very short lifespan as far as OS supportability. It shipped with 10.4 Tiger originally and was only supported up to 10.6 Snow Leopard. So none of the lions, mountain lions, or anything after that. I was able to pick this thing up in 2007 for my grandma at CompUSA. Do you guys remember CompUSA? Ah, crap, now I'm the old guy. Oh, well, I bought this at CompUSA for my grandma and she used it for about 10 years before she could no longer use a computer and it's been sitting in my garage since basically just collecting, I have no idea. I don't know what's inside. Now I did do some upgrades on it in the past and we'll get to that in just a moment. But what I really wanna do is take this thing apart and clean it up because I'm kind of afraid to power it on before cleaning it up because I have no idea what has gotten in there over the last couple years and I just don't wanna fry it or chop up something with the fan that may be living in there. And then when we do turn it on, let's see if this thing boots for one. And if it does boot, can I get logged into it? If I can't get logged into it, can I reinstall the OS? Can I make this thing somewhat usable, even though it's very, very much unsupported? I don't know. But to do this work, we're going to be using some spray air, some little cleaner. I got a putty knife to get into this thing, a brush. And I also have this brand new iFixit toolkit, the iFixit ProTech toolkit, I think. This guy has hopefully everything that I need to get into this Mac Mini. I'm sure it does. But without any further ado, let's crack this thing open. Okay, so I'm actually quite surprised that this thing is as clean as it is. So looking inside, there's very little debris, a lot less than I expected but we're still going to go ahead and take this thing apart and make sure that there's nothing in here that we need to worry about. And we'll clean up the case a little bit as well. Now, actually real quick, before I get started, you probably noticed some electrical tape in here. And that's because I've actually cracked this thing open before. And the reason is I actually did some upgrades, but in the process, I broke the connection for the audio connector that I'm just now remembering back in 2011. And so I had to use some electrical tape just to hold the thing in there. I don't know if you can see it on a camera, but basically there's a clip in there that I actually broke that holds the audio cable in there. So hence the tape. Okay, I'm actually shocked, like really shocked about how clean this thing actually is. This thing was used in the household environment for 10 years and then sitting in a dusty, hot, gross garage for another four years. And look at this thing. It's like, almost like it hasn't been sitting around for 14 years. So I think that all I'm really going to do is spray these things out pretty well with some canned air and call it good. One of the reasons I did want to open this thing up is because I actually did do some upgrades back in 2011. I upgraded the processor from the original 1.5 gigahertz core solo processor to a T7600, which is a 2.33 gigahertz core two duo. So this thing actually got a little bit better lifespan. I was able to actually install macOS Lion on this thing, I believe. I think that's what's on there. Don't quote me on that until we get it booted up. We also upgraded the RAM to two gigabytes from the original 512 gigabytes. And I changed out that 60 gigabyte internal hard drive to a 80 gigabyte internal SSD, which you can't really see in here because it's under the optical drive, but it is my first SSD that I ever bought. It's a Intel something or other that I put in back in 2011 and it really improved the performance of this machine. So I guess I'll just put this thing back together and we'll see if the thing boots. 
All right, now it's kind of like the moment of truth. We got everything put back together. We're plugged in with this DVI to HDMI cable. Although it's 4K display, hopefully that won't cause any issues. We have this Mac Alley keyboard, which is just a USB keyboard. I just got an Amazon. I got this Logitech M510 mouse, and I'm sure it's going to be just fine. I did not end up using most of the tools in the iFixit toolkit. I used the little spudger and I used the tweezers. That's about it, but that's okay. Hopefully another project in the future will utilize these tools a little bit more. All right, so fingers crossed, we're going to plug this guy in and press the power button. Ooh, I hear something. We got a bong sound. How about that? The fan is whirling up. You know, after using the M1s and you never hear a fan, like this is crazy loud. HDMI one. Oh! <gasps> Holy crap, it worked. Keyboard assistant, yeah, okay. It doesn't recognize the keyboard. Look at that. Holy cow, this thing booted. It sounds like this thing is about to like take off a runway somewhere. That is crazy. Maybe there's a CD in there. All right, now the tricky part is getting into this thing. Do I know my password? First of all, let me try my account. Holy crap, my password worked. Can you believe that? Java applications, deny. Unlock, continue login. And we are in. I actually am super surprised. I cannot believe any of this worked. The date is incorrect. So I actually did, when I had it unlocked, I changed the battery on the inside, the little CR3032 battery. So the clock probably has no idea what day it is. Plus it hasn't been online for many years. So let's go ahead and set that. I decided to open up the case again because that fan was driving me nuts. And I realized I did not reconnect the temperature sensor in the front. But what do you expect? I'm no Luke Miani. All right, so if we go to About This Mac, you'll see we're at version 10.6.8, which is Snow Leopard. And there really wasn't a lot of updates and a lot of new things in Snow Leopard, as I recall. When it was released back in 2009, I think you really just got some basic items like exchange support. You got updated PDF support in Mac OS and Doc Expose, and that's really about it. The rest was mostly just internal optimizations. And you can see here, instead of the 1.5 gigahertz core solo, I do have that 2.33 Intel Core 2 Duo and two gigabytes of RAM. Using Snow Leopard in 2021 is probably not going to be super productive. So it looks like we open up Safari and I think this is Safari version four or five, version five. And you have the separate Google bar up here with tabs. I believe you actually get real tab looking tabs at the top, which is kind of nice, you know, compared to what we're getting with iOS 15 and macOS Monterey. But I would bet that most things don't render correctly. So we can see that even apple.com just does not load the way that you expect. Let's see if we go to Google, see if anything comes up there. Yeah, that looks okay. Amazon. So this is completely unsupported. And this looks like it's loading okay, but I would bet I'd have a lot of issues on this site. What other applications do I have on here? So we have AJA system test for disk speed, carbon copy cloner, chess. I assume chess still works. Hey, how about that? Crash plan, oh man. Crash plan was the best peer to peer backup program, completely encrypted between friends. And it was so nice. There was no fees. You could back up to your friends, your friends could back up to you. And then they killed it. Oh my gosh, dashboard. I miss dashboard so much. I loved having these little widgets and no, what they're doing in current versions of Mac OS is not the same. Being able to quickly get to just a couple utilities that you use all the time, like a calculator was super awesome. I had flip for Mac to be able to play Windows media files on Mac. Google Chrome, I wonder what version this is. Looks like this is Chrome version unknown. Looks like Chrome version 49 and I cannot get any updates for this. We also got iPhoto, of course, Sync, Podcasts, iTunes, Producer, Picasa. That was the better photo app in my opinion at the time. 
Skype and TeamViewer for remote access and XBench. Ooh. Let's see what kind of results we get on XBench on this Core 2 Duo Mac Mini. So I got a total score of 189.84. Is that good? I have no idea. If you guys have any idea what another XBench score is, let me know in the comments below. All right, so there's not a lot that I can actually do with this Mac Mini in 2021 running macOS Snow Leopard. When Apple released macOS Lion, they actually dropped support for the core solo processor in the Mac Mini. But because I did upgrade it to that Core 2 Duo, I can actually run macOS Lion on this computer, even though it's unsupported. I'll leave a link in the description below to this video, which helped me get the information I needed to actually install Lion on this computer. And now I have Lion installed and ready to go on this external drive. So we can see if we can boot up with Lion on this computer. So from the boot menu, we can select the external hard drive and boot. And we're in. Unfortunately, I had to actually start this in safe mode because it wasn't booting correctly. But it looks like we are now good with macOS 10.7 Mountain Lion running on this super old Mac Mini. Mountain Lion came with big changes like the integrated app store. You got things like the launch pad for the first time, which is ironically one of the things that was kind of driving me away from the Mac in that period of Mac software. I kind of got tired of the iOSification of Mac. We got mission control. We got, I believe, airdrop for the first time. I don't know if you can see on here, network. But I think airdrop was part of macOS Lion. And that's when I think that the autosave and the versioning also started in Apple's own applications as well. So pretty big update going from Snow Leopard to Lion. And you can do that if you swap out the processor and the core solo, blah, blah, blah. Anyway. That's pretty much it. There's not a whole lot I can do with this computer. I'm really surprised that it actually booted up and started and is running as well as it is after being used for 10 years and then sitting for four in a garage. I'm really surprised how clean it was. And yes, I did mess up the fan to begin with, but whatever, I got it fixed. So now most likely this Mac mini will probably just end up on a shelf as a display piece, conversation piece, decoration, whatever for my office. I don't know but this was kind of a little fun project and I'm glad that I finally got this out of the garage and opened it up because it was just looking really pretty pathetic in my garage shelf. So let me know what you guys think. Do you have any questions about this Mac mini, the processor upgrade process or Mac OS Lion or Snow Leopard? Let me know in the comments below. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, definitely hit the thumbs up button. Hit subscribe if you want and I'll see you next time.